In this video, I'll show you how to build this beautiful AI image generator by combining the power of N8N as well as an AI powered app builder called Lovable. And the best part is you don't have to write any code. In fact, this is easier than you might imagine. So here we can see the last image that was generated and we get a few prompt ideas. And of course we can see the last few generations. Let's enter a prompt like a cat with a bone. Let's click on generate. And our app is now using N8N to generate the AI image. So if we go to N8N, we can see that this workflow is currently running. And now that the execution completed, and we get this highly detailed image of a cat with a bone. And of course, I can view my previous generations as well. Now this is using cutting edge technology. For the image generation model, we are using OpenAI's Image One model, and that is the same technology that's currently available in ChatGPT. This model is exceptionally good at generating detailed images with text. And text is typically something that other AI image generation models struggle with. But this is something Image One excels at. So let's say something like a woman holding a sign with the text subscribe to Leon. And let's generate this. And there you go, we get this detailed image and the text is absolutely spot on. I think you're really going to enjoy this video. In fact, this is really simple to implement. It actually involves about three nodes in N8N. Apple use Lovable to generate the UI components for us. And as per the friendly lady sign, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting the subscribe button and liking the video. First, let's go to our N8N dashboard. Let's click on create workflow and let's give our workflow a name, something like AI image generator. Let's press enter. Now for the first node, let's simply add the trigger manually node. All right, so if I click on test workflow, nothing really happens. This test workflow node simply outputs no data, but that's fine for now. Let's simply move on to the next node in this workflow by going to AI. Let's add the open AI node and then select the generate an image action. Now you will have to set your OpenAI credentials. So within this dropdown, click on create new credential and to get an API key, go to platform.openai.com front slash API keys. Simply generate your key and then add it to N8N. I'm going to cancel this as I've already created my key. Then under resource, select image, under operation, select generate an image. And for the model, select GPT image one. If you don't see this model, then it means you have to upgrade your N8N instance. As support for this model was only released in the last few hours. So let me just show you what version I'm on. If I go to settings, I'm currently on version 1.91.2. So simply upgrade your N8N instance and you should see that model. Now under prompt, let's enter something like a dog chasing a car. Now before we execute this, let's add two options. The first one is the quality of the image. Now this will affect the cost of the generation and it also affects the time it takes to generate the image. While I'm testing this, I'm actually going to use the low quality mode and let's add another option. And this time let's select the resolution. Here we can select the resolution of the image. I'll just leave it on this default resolution. But of course, if you want something like a thumbnail, you could use this resolution. Or if you need a portrait style image, this resolution might be a better fit. All right, let's go ahead and execute this step. Now, I do want to mention that the very first time I ran this, I actually got an error message back from OpenAI. And all I had to do was verify my account with OpenAI. It did not cost anything. I didn't need a registered company. It was really simple. In fact, all I had to do was go to the OpenAI dashboard. So this is the same place we went to generate the API key. All I had to do was go to settings and within organization settings, I had to click this button to verify my identity. And the verification process was super simple. So if you do run into any issues, that's how you can go ahead and verify your account. Right, now this worked for me, so we get this data output. And if we click on view, we can see the image of the dog chasing the car. We used the low quality mode, so the quality of the image is not that great, but for testing purposes, this is perfect. 
In fact, let's have a look at the difference between low and high quality. So let's select high. Let's test the step again with the same prompt. And I think you'll agree, this looks way more realistic and detailed. Okay, so we do have to make a few changes as at the moment, we're hard coding the prompt. And of course we want the prompt to be received from our lovable application. So let's go back to the canvas and let's replace this test workflow node with something else. Let's select the on webhook call node instead. This will allow external applications like lovable in this example to trigger our workflow. How this works is N8N will expose this HTTP endpoint and this is what external applications can use to call our N8N workflow. We get both a test URL and a production URL. We'll use the test URL in the interim. Let's change the HTTP method from get to post. Then let's change the name of the path to something like image gen. Optionally, we can set authentication and you might want to do this if you are planning to make this a production ready application. For the sake of the tutorial, I'll simply go with no authentication. Then under respond, let's select using respond to webhook node. Then let's go back to the canvas. Let's hook up this webhook node to OpenAI. And finally, let's add one more node. And this will be the respond to webhook node. And under respond with, let's change this to binary file. All right, so what this means is we now have an HTTP endpoint that a service like Lovable can call to trigger our workflow. Lovable will pass the prompt which the user entered on their UI, and that prompt will be passed to the OpenAI node. The image generated by OpenAI will then be returned back to Lovable, so that Lovable can render it on the screen. So that means we need to give Lovable some way of passing the prompt via this webhook. So what we can do is open up the webhook, then in the output, click on this edit button, and let's remove everything within these square braces. So these two. Now within this, add an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And let's add a property called body and colon. And this also needs an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And within body, let's pass another property called prompt colon. And now we can enter any prompt that we want, like a dog with a bone. Let's save this. So the final output should look something like this, where we've got this body object. And within body, we've got this prompt value. All right, let's open up the OpenAI node. And then under prompt, let's remove this. And let's add the prompt from our webhook instead. Great. Now we should be able to test this workflow end to end. Let's click on test workflow. All right, so we can see that OpenAI generated an image. And if we open up the respond to webhook, we can see that the image is simply passed back via the webhook. Cool. So for performance sake, I'm just going to temporarily change the quality to low. And now we can save this workflow. And let's go ahead and activate this workflow as well. So this will give us this production endpoint. So if we click on production, it gives us this endpoint over here, which Lovable can call. So let's copy this endpoint. So now we can go ahead and build our beautiful application using Lovable. If you're new to Lovable, it's similar to services like Chef and Bolt or V0, where you can provide a prompt and this application will use AI to generate all the front end components for you. Now let's go through this prompt together. First, let's say, let's build an AI image generator. The interface should have a modern and sleek look. The user should be able to enter a prompt describing an image they'd like to generate and then click a button to start the generation. In order to generate the image, use the following endpoint. And this is the production URL that we copied from N8N. So let's simply paste that into the prompt. And let's give Lovable some additional information so it understands how to call this endpoint. So we could say the HTTP method is post. So let's actually add it here. HTTP method is post. Let's also give Lovable an example of how to pass data into this webhook. So from the webhook view, let's go to JSON mode. 
and simply copy everything within this body tag. So we can exclude body. So let's copy prompt along with the opening and closing curly braces. And it's only add that to lovable. So we can say example body, and this only contains prompt with this example prompt. Lovable will automatically pass in this body property and everything else that's needed. So all you want is whatever properties you created within this body tag. And that should be it. We can now go ahead and run this prompt. And Lovable will now go ahead and generate our application for us. All right, so it seems like Lovable's generated our application for us. So let's give it a spin. I'm going to enter a prompt like a professional portrait of a woman in a floral dress, standing in a park, golden hour. Let's generate the image and let's hope for the best. Okay, so it's saying creating your masterpiece. All right, so it seems like the generation actually failed and that is very normal. So if we go to N8N, we can see that the execution was indeed successful. So the execution ran and it passed back the image successfully. So this means Lovable successfully called our workflow, but I think it had no idea how to deal with the response from our webhook. So let's help it a bit. We know that the webhook responds with a binary file. So let's actually tell Lovable what this response looks like. Let's say the endpoint will respond with a binary file, i.e. the generated image. All right, let's run this and let's see if it makes any difference. And I intentionally wanted to include this in the video so that you can see how I go about troubleshooting these issues. All right, so it's saying the image generator now correctly processes images. So let's run this again. Let's go back to N8N. We can see the workflow is running. And look at that, this time it worked. Awesome. Now that we know our AI image generation app is working perfectly, all we have to do is publish it. So let's click on publish and let's click on publish again. And now we can access our application from anywhere in the world using this domain that was generated by Lovable. So let's open this up in a new tab and let's try this again by saying a woman running on the beach. And there we go, we get our generated image. Now, of course the quality is not great and that is because we changed the quality to low so in your application, this is a safe time to change the quality to high. And now your application will produce way better images. This is not a lovable tutorial. So if you would like me to create a dedicated video on using all the features offered by lovable, then let me know down in the comments. But if you want to use a database, user authentication, a file system, and all that good stuff, you can simply connect lovable to Superbase. But again, let me know if you would like to see a dedicated video on Lovable. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Also, YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this next video, so click on the card on the screen right now.